Let's say you are yeah. trying to get your equipment ready. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Pastor Sunday. How are you? Yeah, very well. Thank you. Uh, praise God. Thank God. Praise God. Yes. Wonderful. So we'll give a few minutes uh, and then we'll, we'll yeah. see who we have and then we we make a start. It's, um, it's a good thing to for us to be able to have this uh, these kind of meetings where pastors from all over the world can where we can meet together and pray together such an honor and a, and a privilege so um, I'm encouraged and I'm sure everybody who joins us today will be strengthened and will be encouraged so we'll just give a few minutes and then we we start so, more or less we've already started anyway <laughs> It started by greeting. Good morning. Pastor Agnes, good morning. Good morning, sir. How is how is the weather where you are, Pastor Agnes? We thank God all is well. Okay. It's good, it's good. I believe the um the pastors in London cannot make it today. Yeah. They have uh, a an assemblies of God um, meeting. Mm -hmm. Um so they won't be joining us. Normally they are here regularly, but um, they can't join us. But we'll see how how things go. Pray that more people will join us. So um, I'm just going to start now with a with a word of prayer. I'm going to commit this meeting into the into God's hands. I'm going to trust God that God will be with us. God will help us. God will encourage us. So Father, in the name of yeah. Jesus, we're so grateful once again. We're so thankful. To be able yeah. to come together as your children, first of all, as your children, even before we can call for ourselves your servants or anything else. Mm -hmm. So grateful, Father Lord, for this opportunity. And as we commit this mm -hmm. meeting into your hands, we pray that you will be glorified in the in the midst of your people and you take absolute control mm -hmm. and absolute charge of our proceedings and what we shall be doing. But we are mm -hmm. grateful for for the word that we're going to be receiving. We are grateful for the prayers that we offered and we are trusting you that in the end of the day, we will be blessed, encouraged, and touched. And you alone mm -hmm. be glorified. We pray that for those of us who are still contemplating to join us, that they will make that decision very right now and you'll join us and we'll all have a yeah. blessed time together. We pray also concerning the technology. Mm -hmm. And we pray for the in the into the airways and that everything will work out well. The microphones, the speakers, and everything will work out well, yes. Father Lord. We thank you. Mm -hmm. we give you all the praise in Jesus' yes, mighty name. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. So amen. without um, wasting any further time, we're going to ask Pastor Bright to give us a word of encouragement. I think that will be for about just 15 minutes. Um Normally, it would be our general overseer, Reverend Dr. Steve Alma. But from time to time, we do have the opportunity to, to you know, to hear from one or two other people. Um, so this morning, we've been hearing from Pastor Bright all the way in Australia. So over to you, Pastor Bright. All right. Thank you, Pastor Sunday. Amen. I hope everyone is... Uh, um... All right, I'm doing very well. I bring Thank greetings God. from um, your brothers and sisters here in Australia. Amen. Before we mm -hmm. go into just a little word of exhortation today, let's have a little word of prayer. Amen. Lord, we bless you. We thank you because you are God. There is no one like you. We just want to reverence your holy name even right now. Lord, as we want to uh, hear briefly, you know, from your word, we pray, oh God, that you uh, uh, encourage our hearts, oh God. 
Lord, strengthen Amen. us, God, for the work of the ministry in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I'm going to be reading from uh, 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel, uh, because I'm a technology person, I'm just going to share my screen. But the host has disabled screen sharing. Okay. <laughs> That's fine. Just one minute. One minute. And I wanted you to be able to see and follow yeah. along with me. Now you can share your screen. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Can everybody see my screen? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So I'm just using Bible Gate, a Bible Gateway, which is easy so that we can all follow and be on the same page. So uh you can either read your own or you or you follow along with me. First Samuel 13. Okay, first Samuel 13. Uh, because of time, and I know that this is one uh, scripture that you may be already familiar with. So I'm just going to go down to um, verse 6. The Bible says, when the men of Israel saw that they were in the straits, for the people were distressed, then the people did hide themselves in caves and in thickets and in rocks and in high places and in pits. And some of the Hebrews went over Jordan to the land of God and Gilead. As for Saul, he was yet in Gilgal, and all the people followed him trembling. And he tarried seven days, according to the set time that Samuel had appointed. But Samuel came not to Gilgal, and the people were scattered from him. And Saul said, Bring thither a burnt offering to me, and peace offerings. And he offered the burnt offering. And it came to pass, and as soon as he had made an end of offering, the burnt offering, behold, Samuel came. And Saul went out to meet him, that he might salute him. And Samuel said, what hast thou done? And Saul said, because I saw that the people were scattered from me, and, thou, and that thou camest not within the days appointed, and that the Philistines gathered themselves together at Michmash. Therefore said I, the Philistines will come down now on, upon me to Giga, and I have not made supplication unto the Lord. I forced myself, therefore, and offered a burnt offering. And Samuel said to Saul, Thou hast done foolishly, foolishly. Thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God, which he commanded thee. For now would the Lord have established thy kingdom upon Israel forever. But now thy kingdom shall not continue. The Lord has sought him a man after his own heart, and the Lord had commanded him to be captain over his people, because thou hast not kept that which the Lord commanded thee. Amen. Like I said, this is uh, a particular scripture that you're probably familiar with. But tonight, I want to take this uh, few minutes out to just uh, encourage us as children of God and as ministers of the gospel concerning this scripture. You see, when you read this on surface value, uh, you might not get exactly what is going on here. So I want to spend a few, uh, you know, minutes to just encourage us, brethren. Hallelujah. Because we look at ourselves today, you and I, okay, as pastors have been called into positions of anointing and responsibility, okay? Spiritual responsibility, just like Saul. Amen. So there is already a linkage. There's a common ground here between us and Saul. Amen. But we can see from what Saul has done that uh, Samuel gave him the real word. He said, you have done foolishly. Foolishly. Now, why has he done foolishly? I'll give you a little background because like I said before, you and I have been called into this position. Okay. Today is very, very easy for anybody to come out and call himself any name, any title. Amen. Sometimes <laughs> I look and I usually make a joke with this with, with my brother. You see one person, he's reverend, doctor, apostle, professor. <laughs> only, one, only one person. 
<laughs> I mean, where does it end? <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. But again, you can give yourself whatever title you like. That's There's no problem with that. The most important thing is that we recognize that we have been called into a special office. Amen. Look at the life of Saul and, and, and you, you actually examine the life of Saul. You can actually see a parallel between Saul and Samson. Amen. You can see a parallel. Both of them were called by God, okay, heavily anointed. Both of them were called to actually destroy the, Philipp the Philistines, okay? But at the end of the day, both of them failed in carrying out the responsibility. Samson was killed by the Philistines, okay? And Saul was killed by the Philistines. Amen. You know, if you look at the life of Samson, instead of focusing on the task at hand, he went about chasing women and having a lot of, um, you know, parties and everything. He did everything except what God has to be done. Amen. That's all he did. All in, something was meant to be a Nazarite, okay, which means he's dedicated unto God. He's not to touch uh, dead things. He's not to touch uh, strong wine. But again, time will fail me. You just look at the life of Samson. That's all he did. He was partying and drinking and, and you know, you know, <laughs> most concerned about, you know, women and all everything God said not to do. You look at the life of Samson, he never led Israel how God wanted him to lead. But again, there was never a prophecy. You read throughout the Bible. He never gave any prophecy. He never taught anybody. He never raised any leader. Amen. He never mentored anyone. And he too refused to be mentored. Amen. So, like I said, if you look at the life of Samson and you look at the life of Saul, there's a parallel. The two of them, it's almost as if they were cut from the same cloth. Hallelujah. And that comes to you and I today. You see, from where we've just read, you see that Saul has gone out to battle, okay? And Saul is in the battlefront, and he's so confused. He doesn't know what to do. Now, again, to give you the background, normally before Israel goes out to war, the priest is there to perform some sacrifice. Amen. I want you to stay with me. The priest performs some sacrifice, and that sacrifice is sort of getting the approval of God, glorifying the name of God, and asking God to be with them during the battle, okay? But as we read from the very beginning, Saul chose 3,000 men, okay? But if you start reading down, you see that there was fear in the camp, which means he didn't have even the military prowess to actually lead the people. But not only was there fear in the camp, people started to desert him, amen? And as people were deserting him and leaving and leaving, that's when Saul started to panic. Hallelujah. And as he's panicking, what did he do? He decided, he said, bring me the peace offering, bring me the sacrifice. And he offered the sacrifice unto God, which is a no, no, no. And here I ask you the question, brethren. You see, you and I, we are in the, in the if you like, we are in the tough game. We know we, we, we are on the ground, we are in the battlefield, amen, just like Saul. When people start to leave your church, when you're trying to preach the true undiluted word of God, when outsiders begin to tell you that your church is not growing, <laughs> when people come to your church and they say, oh, this church is good, oh, but I'm not staying here. Yeah, they want to go to the one down the road. Amen. And you know that the church down the road, you see, they've got some style. You know, either they, they give them good music. I don't know. I, I think I know about Africa. I can speak so much about Africa. I can speak about Europe. Okay. But what usually happens is that either they give them 
their food, or, or, or the man is giving them prophecies. Amen. Prophecies that may or may not be true. Amen. And if you get to uh, a place like, you know, the Europe and America and Australia, you know, the, 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 the pastors might be giving the people a lot of entertainment. Hallelujah. A lot of entertainment and motivational speaking and, you know, all these things, but the Bible. And so what then do you do when your church is not growing as you think it should? What then do you do when people are leaving? Amen. And you see the, the church of the, the other pastor is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. They have an overflow. <laughs> they are putting TVs outside because the, the room is no longer big enough to contain them. But you look at yourself, amen, and you have only just a few loyal members. Even people who come, they seem to be disappearing and going to order. What do you do at that point? It is my prayer and it is my encouragement to us this evening. It might be morning for you where you are, that we do not follow the example of Saul. Hallelujah. Because we can see here what Saul did. Amen. It's not different from us today. Like I said, who, which counsel would you then take? What policy would you then bring? Would you then go ahead and say, oh, you know, let's start focusing on entertainment. Let's start focusing on motivational speaking. Let's start uh, doing, you know, prophecy. You know, I know a lot of pastors who have not come and suddenly the pastor you met yesterday, a, a humble man, you know, today he's not going by the name prophet. Hey, and you're asking yourself, you know, what, what kind of prophet are you? Who ordained you a prophet? Amen. And then the excuse is, oh, you know, if you are a prophet, it, it carries more weight. People respect you more. People of God, we are not here because we want people to respect us. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. We are not here because we want people to accept us. Amen. You know, God has called us into special offices. Now we look at the life of Saul. He is called as a king. Now, if you read Deuteronomy, Hallelujah. It is clearly, clearly spelled at them. Moses laid the foundation. Mm -hmm. These are the roles and responsibility of the king, and these are the roles and responsibility of the prophet. It is not a king's role to be performing sacrifices. That is the job of the priest. But here we see Saul. Samuel told him, wait for me, seven days. Uh, it is really unfortunate that I've only got 15 minutes. I don't have all the time to give you all the uh, the background. But you can see there, he said, because you haven't come at the appointed time. Therefore, I began to panic. And what did I do? I went in and I started to offer this sacrifice. Now, if you, if you read this um, chapter and the one before it, you actually, this will actually make more sense to you. Because what is showing us here, there was another priest in that place. His name was Abijah. Why did Saul not ask Abijah to perform the sacrifice? <laughs> because he probably thought, you know, this guy is not good enough. Yeah. For some reason, at uh, this work of God that I'm doing, I have to manipulate it. Yeah. I've got some, some style. I've got some secrets. I've got some, you know, 11 secrets, <laughs> 11 secret herbs and spices, <laughs> like KFC. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, when I put it, you know, people will come, people of God, the very first thing we need to realize is that when it comes to the gospel, we are only the masterpiece of God. We are only the instrument. Amen. The church is growing. It's not because of you. <laughs> The, the earlier we understand that, the better for us. Amen. Miracles are happening. It's not because you, you prayed and you fasted. No, everybody is praying and fasting. Amen. The reason that things are happening, the reason that church is growing is because God decided, amen, to prosper his work. Amen. So myself and yourself as pastors, our job is to go and speak what God has put in our mouth. Amen. I, I, I mm -hmm. take you back to Moses for a minute. We look at the rod. We think, oh, it was the rod of Moses. <laughs> and I always laugh. It might be the rod of Moses, 
but the power behind it was the power of God. Amen. Yes. You Amen. look at the book of Acts. Amen. I don't want you to think I, I'm being um, overzealous here. But when I look at the book of Acts, yeah, it is called the Acts of the Apostles. But you read it, and you read it closely, and you go, hold on. This is not the act of the apostles. This is the act of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> it's the Holy Spirit that is actually at work here. <laughs> Amen. Through the apostles. Mm -hmm. And I don't want us as pastors to actually mistake for one minute that we think, oh, it's, it's because of me. You know, I got a shiny bald head. I can speak eloquently. You know, I'm I'm tall. And, I, and I'm dark and handsome, you know, that's why everybody is coming. <laughs> Amen. Because Saul was all those things as well. Amen. If you, if, you, if you look at the very few chapters before chapter 13 that we read, you will see where it actually describes Saul. He stood head and shoulders taller than everybody else. And by the way, the, the, the name Saul means one that was requested. You see, he was requested. The people requested him. Amen. But we find here that Saul had more faith. Amen. Saul had more faith in the ritual of sacrifice than he had in the God whose power he was calling on. I will say that again. Saul had more faith in the ritual acts of performing the sacrifice than in the God himself who is actually providing the power. Why would he not wait for Samuel to come? You look at it, <laughs> every time I, 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 I look at this scripture, it looks as if the man has been set up. It was a test. Because immediately he finished performing, then comes Samuel. Which means he just needed to wait a little bit more and Samuel would have been there and he wouldn't have been in trouble. People of God, when we look at the life of Saul, there are many, many things I could say, but because of the short time that I have, you see, you look at the life of Saul. He lost the kingship even the very moment he was given kingship. He lost it. As you can see, this is one of the examples. Amen. We Most times we always put our mind on when he disobeyed and he didn't kill uh, the king of the Philistine. But no, 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 no. That was the combination. That was the, the, the last, uh, if you like, the last straw that broke the camel's back. Before then, he had lost the kingship. He had been misbehaving. And it boils down to one simple thing. He didn't know God. He knew the rituals. He knew everything else, but he didn't know God. And people of God, this evening, I want to uh, encourage us and I want to challenge us to not be carried away. Hallelujah. Do not be carried away. To not be um, like Saul. He, was, he, he started to panic. And in his panicking, that's when he started to make all these mistakes. The Bible says, they that trust in the Lord, they shall not be put to shame. But they that trust in the Lord, they are also not in haste. Amen. They that trust, in, they are not in haste. Why? Because their heart and their soul is focused on God. And we know, we know that in due time, God will not only bless, God will prosper the work that he has given to you. And so in closing, I want to encourage everyone, let's keep focused. Amen. Let's keep focus on the high calling, the price of the high calling. Hallelujah. Because ah, we cannot manipulate church growth. When people leave, they can leave. When people stay, they can stay. But the word of the Lord remains the same. Your true value is in you staying, staying true to your calling. Amen. Yeah. I hand over to Pastor Sunday. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Pastor Bry. Thank you so much for that of encouragement. Um, it's, it's, it is it's um, it is a word that we do need as, as leaders that we do not fall into the trap 
of of Samuel and of, of um, what's the other prophet that you mentioned? Um, Samson. 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 And and all the other ones and the examples that we receive in the, that we see in scriptures. They are for all. They are for us to learn and they are for us to uh, you know to take advantage of the lessons learned in. And so th thank you so very much. Um, very, very powerful word of encouragement for us as pastors and leaders today. Um, and we don't want to lose focus. We want to lose focus on the one who has called us. We don't want to lose focus on the source of our strength and the source of our hope and the source of the anointing, which is whatever it is that we think we have, the source of our giftings. We don't want to lose um, focus on him. So... Once again, thank you so very much. Um, these kind of words are the words I, I look forward to every meeting we have um, because they are specific to, to us as leaders, as pastors. You know, there's, there's one word for a general congregation and there's another word for pastors and leaders. And these pastors and leaders, um, as we come in to these meetings month after month, we, we receive a word that is specific to us. So we are so grateful to God for that. Um, we're going to move on. And um, I just want us to go around the table. I know it's not a table, but uh, it is a virtual table. We just <laughs> It's a virtual table. I want us to go around the table and bring a word of greeting. Or if you have a scripture uh, that you want to share or testimony or a church program that you would like us to consider in prayer. Um, let's just go around the table one after the other and bring a greeting. I'm going to start from, let me start from myself. And uh, anyway, I'm Pastor Sunday, Pastor Sunday Showway, International Christian Ministries in Malta. Um, so I bring greetings from Malta. Um, don't have any particular scripture to share except to say that. Um, God has been working very, very powerful on our behalf, just as Pastor Bright said. Um, we are not looking to the left or to the right. We are focusing on God, and God has been faithful to us. He's strengthening our church, strengthening our foundations. Recently, we've seen uh, a few more people coming to the church, and uh, we just trust in God. And we, we, we um, so that would be our prayer point that you know our structures will continue to be stronger spiritual structures and uh, I, I wrote something down here that we spiritual structures and um, other structures anyway that would be our own prayer point just for the structures to be strong and um, I would leave the, that for now can I go to Pastor Akinlolu in Nigeria if you have a greeting a word of encouragement, a scripture, um, a program report. Just in a few minutes, Pastor Akilolu. Good morning, everyone. Pastor Akilolu is my name from Lagos, Nigeria, shall we? Well, we want to appreciate God. I don't have much to say, but firstly, from the scripture that Pastor Bright even shared with us, I can see that those prophets mentioned in the Bible saw something and every other was they lose their focus. In everything we are doing as a Christian, we should be focused. We should not lose our focus. No matter the, the challenges, no matter what can come our way, we should all know where we are going. We should know the goals that we are pursuing. Because if we know the goals we are pursuing, we will not lose focus. Once a man is focused, surely, Something good will surely come out of it. We shall not look at the distraction of other churches, other ministers, what they are doing. We are called to make a difference. Because I do tell people, I am called to make a difference. I must not think the way others are thinking. I must not do the way others are doing. I am called to show the people the way. Because he told us in the book of Matthew chapter 28. He said, go ye. It's everybody, go ye. He said, I am not here because of people that have known me, but I'm here because of people that are yet to know. So we are to show the people the way, and then we should stick to the truth. 
lest the people knows the truth that we are not like other people. God has ordained us for a purpose. And do not deceive, don't let us deceive ourselves. God will keep on ordaining people, ordain people every day, every minute, because people that God has ordained before, they are working in the journey. So I pray that we will not wake in the journey in the mighty name of Jesus. And God mm. will continue to strengthen us in the mighty name of Jesus. And I pray mm. that the power of the Holy Spirit will never leave us in the mighty name of Jesus. So mm. thank you so much. We also want to appreciate God for the church of God. Things are going on well. And then even Nigeria as a whole, because we have been facing one or two challenges in Nigeria. Money scarcity, first scarcity, everything has been even the election, the just concluded election, uh, presidential election. We thank God that God really took control of everything. And then we are also praying in Nigeria that by next week, they are going to have governorship election, that God will also take over everything. So that's part of our prayer point in Nigeria. And then we pray that God will manifest his power. The prayer of we Christians will never go in vain in Nigeria in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Pastor Akilulu, for that word of encouragement. I also noticed some prayer requests there, or some prayer points that we can consider later on in the meeting. Um, let me quickly go on to Minister Belinda from Shawway, Australia. If you have a greeting, have a prayer request, you have a word of encouragement, very briefly, thank you. Welcome everybody. Um, I bring greetings from Australia. Thank you, Pastor Bright, for that powerful word. Um, very encouraging, I appreciate you. Um, I don't have anything to say. Um, just I just thank God for a safe return from our recent mission to Nepal. Um, um, and we do need, it's great to see Shawe Nepal online today. Very good to see. <laughs> we miss you guys. <laughs> That's all. Praise the Lord. Um, I'm assuming um, when you went to Nepal, you met these pastors? Yes, the, um, we have Pastor Titus and Pastor Abraham online oh. today. So it's it's great. Pastor Abraham is the senior pastor, um, but doesn't speak good English. Um, so Pastor Titus is there to translate and stuff as well. So um, we've been. This is that was our third journey to Nepal. Um, so we know these guys very well. They're like they're our family. So we should give them a good welcome. Okay. Thank it's you very much. It was You're a very welcome, good question. <laughs> You're very much welcome, Pastor Titus and Pastor Abraham Shawe Nepal. Yeah. So nice to have you on this platform. And we pray that it will continue to be a blessing to you as you join with us every month. I pray that you'll be able to commit yourselves to this gathering. Uh, because we do have a very powerful time and um, every time we meet. So you're welcome. Um, but if you could also bring a word of greeting or word of encouragement, a scripture or prayer request, that would be nice. All the way from Shawin, Nepal. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Pastor. Yeah. yeah, we're really happy. This is our first time. And like... Uh, we are so happy and so privileged to join you all the way from different countries. Uh, I am Titus and he is a pastor of Abraham. Uh, so as this is our first time, we really encourage uh, by the word of God uh, from Pastor Bright. Yeah, uh, in ministry, we face many challenges, but our focus would be in God only. No matter what circumstances we go through, but yeah, in Nepal also, we do have many uh, challenges, but uh, uh, beside that, we have a strong faith and we have strong trust in God. 
and he is directing our ministry. We are really happy recently. Uh, Pastor William, with his team, he visited uh, us and we really uh, enjoyed with him, spending time with him. He really encouraged and we learned so many things and uh, the relationship uh, became much stronger. So we are really thankful and um, please pray for our church. Uh, we recently uh, found uh, some places to rent uh, to do worship. So, and uh, we need to build a small house for uh, Pastor Abraham to live there because the church is so far and he desired to live in the same place where the church is. So we are praying for that. So our prayer is uh, prayer point is there. So please uh, pray for us. So uh, I would like to ask if Pastor Abraham want to say something so I can translate. Yeah. Greeting to you all. I don't know uh, how to speak English. But I have great desire to speak with you in English, but I don't know. English. But yeah, your language and my language is different, so I cannot speak English, and I also don't I don't understand English as well. Uh, he's saying I am his uh, son in law, and I am translating for him. I'm in Nepal, I live in Peru, Pago, very poor, and but Charles Barsabio. I it's been long time uh, I have in Christ, uh, almost like 40 years. I received, um, I received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior in Bhutan. But my home is in Nepal. And I am doing uh, God's ministry. And uh, our, uh, we are part of your way. From Nepal. I live in Umerpani. I tira the bars of Pugio. Yes, sir. And many program girl as well. I just cause you go in Pario. My former good again, the was Bunny Parsonalis. And my prayer point is like uh, I'm doing God's ministry and I please pray for me for lost um, God's wisdom so that He can show me how to do His ministry. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you very much. You so welcome, Pastor Titus and Pastor Abraham. Thank you very much for your word of encouragement as well. And we're trusting and believing that God will intervene in your situations and the prayer requests that you have laid down. God has heard those prayer requests and God will indeed intervene on our behalf. Thank you and welcome to Showay. Thank you so much. And I know Pastor Bright has already uh, given us a word of encouragement. But want to, um, let's just hear from you as well, very briefly. Um, you never know, there might be one or two things you would like to add. <laughs> Maybe something you forgot. To... <laughs> <laughs> All right, greetings from Australia, Ashawi, Australia. Uh, my name is Pastor Bright and I'm um, the assistance to Pastor William here in um, Australia. Um, yeah, the church here sends our greetings. We're always praying for every one of you and you're always in our hearts. Uh, for our brethren in Nigeria, um, we're all the same. And again, we're you know, lifting that country up in prayers that God's will be done in that country. We know that the country is uh, you know, a country of great potentials and we want for those potentials to be realized. Amen. God bless you all. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Pastor Bright. Um, as always, we appreciate you. Um, Pastor Bright would normally be the one coordinating the meetings, and he does it so very well. Um, but um, somehow I've, I've been given the opportunity today, and I'm so grateful for that as well. So maybe next month it will be uh, Pastor Bright taking back his... Uh, his microphone, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> but anyway, thank you very much once again. Um, and now we go to Pastor Agnes in Imala. Imala is in Nigeria, it's in Ogun State. 
very close to Abekuta. And I am from Abekuta too. So um, uh, I have a special uh, connection to that area of Nigeria. So um, I'm going to ask uh, Pastor Agnes to give us a word of greeting and encouragement like everybody else. But in addition to that, um, if she can also lead us in prayer, because what we have been doing in the past is we've been, you know, praying one after the other. But today I would like us to be, uh, let Pastor Agnes pray and we uh, let her lead the prayer session and we will follow. We cannot pray together, but she will be leading. I hope that makes uh, makes sense. So, so yeah. Okay. She will lead and then we will, we will follow. We might be able to unmute ourselves so that we pray together, but uh, I would like her own voice to be louder than everybody else's voice so that she's the one leading and there's no there's no doubt that she's leading. So anyway, over to you, Pastor, Pastor Agnes. I, I, I bring greetings from Shuawe Imala in Nigeria, Ogun State. And I pray that the Lord will be with every one of us in Jesus' name. And uh, I want to tell us that the Church of God is doing well in Imala, as we have heard from the Word of God. The Bible says to obey is better than sacrifice. So I want to encourage every one of us to be obedient to the Word of God and be focused with what the Lord has called each and every one of us to do. We should not look uh, on any other person. We should focus on the ministry the Lord has committed into our hands. Now I want to go into prayer session, but before we start our prayer, I want us to worship God with this song. You are Yahweh. Hey, you are Yahweh. You are Yahweh. Hey, you are Yahweh. You are Yahweh, Alpha, Omega. You are Yahweh, Alpha, Omega. Yahweh, you are Yahweh, eh, you are Yahweh, you are Yahweh, eh, you are Yahweh, you are Yahweh, Alpha, Omega, you are Yahweh, Alpha, Omega. I want us to begin to worship the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. I want us to praise Jehovah God for his good unto us. He has been faithful in everything he has been doing for us in Shoreway International Christian Ministry all over the world. Let us appreciate him. Father, we worship your name this morning. We praise your name. We give you praise. We adore you. We say you are good. 
you are kind and your mercies endure it forever. Father, we want to appreciate your goodness towards us. We want to appreciate your protection, our, our mission trip, our people that travel to Australia for mission trip. You are with them. You protect them from any evil on the way. Father, we appreciate you for the souls won in that ministry. Father, we thank you. Father, we appreciate you. We say you are good unto all our leaders, unto all our pastors. Father, we thank you for all our congregation members. Let's thank him. Let's praise him for all what you have been doing for us. Father, we know that you are good unto us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have given Praise. I want us to tell God to cleanse us with the blood of Jesus. Anything that we hinder our prayer this morning, that we not allow God to answer us speedily, Father should cleanse us with the blood of Jesus. Because the word of God says, if you say we are not sinner, we deceive ourselves. Let's plead the blood of Jesus. The blood that speaks better things than the blood of Abel this morning should cleanse us from anything that may hinder our prayers. Father, this morning, we plead the blood of Jesus. We ask for the cleansing power in the blood of Jesus to cleanse us for, from all our iniquities in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's ask Holy Spirit to take control of this prayer session. For we, we, it is written in the word of God that we know no what to pray, but it is the Holy Spirit that pray for us. Let's ask the Holy Spirit to take control of this prayer session in the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, we depend on you. We want you to come and take control of this time. Holy Spirit, direct and guide us in the mighty name of Jesus. Our prayer, the first prayer point that I want us to pray is to ask God, Lord, please help us to be focused in the ministry you have committed into our hand. Father, help us to be focused in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, help us to be focused. The word of God says, what God commits into our hand, what God is requiring from the, from the steward is to be faithful. Father, help us to be faithful in the work you have committed into our hand in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's ask for the spirit to be faithful to God in the area the Lord has put each and every one of us to. Father, help us to be focused. Help us to be faithful to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Help us to be looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, help us, O God. Help us to be focused. Help us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. The ministry you have committed into our hand. Father, help us to be faithful to it. Help us to be committed to it in the mighty name of Jesus. We don't want to be looking at anybody, but help us, Lord, to be looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Lord, help us, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's thank God that Lord should give our pastor in Napa the wisdom wisdom to do the work of ministry all of us we need god's wisdom for it is written if anybody has like lack wisdom we should ask let's ask god father every one of us we need wisdom we don't want to do anything with our own wisdom father give us wisdom give our pastor wisdom let's pray the lord will meet their need according to his riches in glory the money needed to build that pastor house, the Lord should provide it for them in the mighty name of Jesus. Silver and gold belong unto our God. Lord, meet the needs of these pastors in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, provide sufficient money in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray, Lord, that the Lord should raise help for them in the mighty name of Jesus. I want us now to remember Nigeria that the Lord should please stay absolute control in Nigeria. Everything that is going on in Nigeria, the Lord should please intervene in the mighty name of Jesus. The governorship election that is coming up on the 11th of this March, God should take control. We don't want any, any, any crisis. We don't want anybody to die again in Nigeria. 
the Lord should please help us. Let's pray in the name of Jesus. We depend on you, O God, that the Lord should intervene in this coming governorship election in Nigeria in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's pray for all our pastors that are not able to join us this month. At, the, at that meeting they have went, the Lord should be with them. The Lord should meet them at the very point of their needs. Let's pray for them in the name of Jesus. Let's commit them into the hand of God. The Lord will be with them where they are in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's continue to worship God because he have answered our prayer. Let's thank him. Let's give him praise. For he said, whatsoever we ask, when we are praying, we should believe that we have received it, and so shall it be unto us. Let's thank God because he always answered our prayer. Let's thank God that this month of March, the Lord will walk with us with signs following. Let's bless the name of the Lord. We will be focused in the ministry the Lord has committed into our hand. We will not look at anybody. Let's thank him because the grace to be faithful to the end, the Lord will release it unto us. Let's appreciate him. Let's give him praise. Lord, we appreciate you. We thank you because you always answered our prayer. We thank you because we will be focused. We will not look at anybody. Father, we thank you because the wisdom needed for the ministry where you have released it unto every one of us especially our pastor in Ape, in the mighty name of Jesus. Australia, all the potential that are in that land, the Lord should make them to manifest even in the church of God. Let's pray and commit that place of Syria into the hand of God. Father, we thank you because in Australia, all the potential, all the good things in that land, you will make them to manifest for your glory. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pastor Agnes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I don't know if it was just me, but I think towards the end of the prayer, the, the line was getting a bit shaky. But we thank God that he, he, that it was only at the end of the prayer. <laughs> Otherwise, if it was in the middle, then we would be struggling a bit. God is faithful. We prayed that the technology would hold up, and it was just at the very end of the prayer that we were hearing some interruptions. So... Uh, we can trust God for everything, not just the, the major things that we think are major. Even for the small things, we, we can trust God to intervene on our behalf in those areas. So we uh, prayed and we have trusted God. And we believe that we will continue to hear some major, major testimonies on this platform, you know, every time we meet. And this is, uh, this is, a, this is a good sign that God is indeed on our, he's working on our behalf, and he will continue to to do so. Um, so at this point, um, I will hand over to uh, Pastor William to conclude the conclude the matter and put all the <laughs> the the cross the T's and dot the I's. Thank you, Pastor William. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much, Pastor Sunday. Beautiful hosting. Thank you, Pastor Brian, for the word and everyone that prayed. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. Well, as you see, some of the guys couldn't come today from Kenya, from uh, UK. They couldn't come today, but we are praying, believing God that they will come next time. But I've got some exciting news for everyone. Uh, you, I don't know if you've received a message from Belinda yet, but uh, during the week, our general overseer and as myself, we agreed that uh, uh, we have a women's prayer meeting going on here. So every last Saturday of the month, so all the churches of show will be joining the it's just women prayer. They will be joining the ladies prayer meeting so that you can have the Zoom link and they, we can never pray no. So I want to encourage all of you to please, 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 you know, encourage your ladies to join. Uh, they they did it this Saturday. Every Saturday they do it, but the whole of Showy Global will be the last Saturday of the month. So if you have not received a letter from Belinda, she will send it to you to give you all the details. Uh, we can all together pray together. We are so excited to have all of us have one voice. And hopefully, 
in the future, we can also have uh, uh, the men as well. So we can be able to move on for prayer. Hallelujah. Well, and secondly, uh, another news, Pastor C also wanted me to pass to all of you is that uh, uh, our conference, our pastor's conference in Nairobi, Kenya, is on, it's set to go. Everything is ready now. So the program are being planned. So please prepare yourselves, start saving some money to come. It's going to be a great time. We have two guest speakers coming, and uh, it's going to be really good to have some of them. You know, you, you meet people together you have not known. So please, if you need more details, we'll send you all of them as time goes on. The, some of us will be preaching, speaking there. It's going to be really good. So let's prepare our heart to come. It's really good to join together every month. So I encourage you all, please don't miss it. And if you have time, there are some of our pastors in Kenya, in Accra, in the in the you know Philippines in and uh, uh Fiji, please just contact them and say hello to them. You know, don't leave it only to myself. So uh, we can all at least say hello to them. I'm so happy to see Pastor Saitos and Pastor Abraham today here. It's so good to see them. It's just that yesterday that we were with them. So uh, it's good to see you all and then uh, let's keep on standing together as for God's glory. I also believe that as we continue doing this, God will bless all of us. I will lift up the banner higher of the name of Jesus. So, greetings to you all. I think we can unmute and greet each other before we say goodbye to everyone. God bless you all. Thank you, sir. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Sunday. You did an excellent job. I think that. Amen. Thank you. I'm thinking of retirement. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Animal, Pastor nice Abraham. <laughs> Yeah. Nice to see you also, I, Pastor I, Akilolu. Yes, I can hear the pastor Sundays from Nigeria, uh, Abekuta, uh -huh. precisely. Yes, I am. Uh, ah, no wonder. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> when are you Wonderful. coming home? When are you coming yeah, that's, home? That is what we even need to ask. Yeah. Because what we are forgot you, when are here. you coming home? When are Later you coming this year, home? by the grace of God. By sometime this year. Oh, <laughs> wonderful. But don't forget yeah. to pay us a visit in Lagos also when you come around, sir. We will do that. I'll do and, <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, thank you so yeah. much, sir. Nice to see you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Abraham. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, Pastor. Yeah. Bye bye. See you. See you next time. It's good thank to see you guys. God bless. God bless you. Okay. Yeah. God bless you bye. All. Okay, bye, bye. <laughs> bye. God bless. Yeah, when you call. Pastor Kinolu, God bless you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Hi, Zidane. Hello, hello. You know I'm calling. Shall I call you about Pastor Sunday? I'll call you about Pastor Sunday. Ah, hello. 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 Sorry, Pastor yeah. William, as uh, Pastor Bright. No so I understand <laughs> some of the things you're saying. <laughs> okay. You are talking about food. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, 